as of this recording, it is currently pouring down, storming even, and I don't think that's good weather to play games in. But you know what I think it's good weather for? Reactions, you know what I'm saying? Today we're reacting to some horror shorts, told them some horror, God. Horror stories. Horror stories. Horror stories. Me personally, as a kid, I wasn't watching those things. My brothers and cousins were. I don't. I was out the loop. I wasn't trying to watch them things, bro. Right? Yes, you can say I was kind of scared. The baby. A punk. You see, you didn't have to say. Today, we're reacting to three unnerving tender horror stories animated. Shall you send a. I feel like I would only use Tinder if I was like very desperate. Aren't you already desperate? Shut up, Jay. My fault, gang. Let's get into it. Okay, guys. Tinder horror stories. All right, let's go. My girlfriend left me two weeks before this. I know two weeks is not long enough to fully process a breakup and start using Tinder. Oh I was wow! Within a few days, my boy was matched with everybody. Talking to regularly. I asked them both out on a date for separate days, hoping one of them would be a good match for me. Unfortunately, the first one ghosted me though, so I was mm. left with just the one, making That's me tough. even more desperate. <laughs> In her picture, she seemed like my perfect type. Blonde hair, blue eyes, and just really attractive. Okay. Her personality, however, left much to be desired, at least over text. She was oh, she a dry texter. Duran, blind, just dry texter. So I figured I'd give it a shot and continue with the date. I decided on a cheap restaurant that she agreed was close enough to her. On the night of the date, I got ready restaurant. And down, then texted her that I was there and stood out in front of the restaurant. I was five minutes early, so I wasn't expecting her to show up right away. Oh, you about to get ghosted twice? Minutes, or a catfish? Her. The phone rang for a few, then she answered. Hey, where are you? I'm right outside the place. I said. I waited a few seconds. It's a catfish. Hello? <coughs> it's a catfish. She hung up without saying a word. It's a catfish. Great. Another girl ghosted me. I was embarrassed and annoyed. I got back in my car and drove home. I made myself a bowl of cereal. You've been talking to a whole dude the entire time. That is tough. <laughs> I passed out around 8, still on the couch. When That's I when I heard her know it. I reached oh. for my phone to check the time, but I couldn't find it. I opened my eyes a bit wider and sat up, still searching for my phone. During my search, I caught something in the corner of my eye. Yep. My back door was slightly open. Now you gotta get the hands right. Not even now you gotta get the hands right between the door, but open slightly enough so that it wasn't even with the wall. Kind of like someone had pulled it partially closed so that it wouldn't make the click sound. I stood still, looking around. Got that Everything grab, felt grab like that, came so that spoon. quiet. I took one last quick search for my phone, then gave up and walked over to the back door. It was just as I'd said, barely not closed. I always kept every door locked. So this was a terrifying thing to see after napping just a few feet away. Mm, lock picture though? I thought maybe when the intruder saw me on the couch, they must have just left. But then mm. I started thinking about my Your phone being gone. gone. What if they'd stolen my phone? They would have they had have it right in front of me, just inches away, probably watching me sleep. A shiver ran through my body. These thoughts were just making me more scared. I pushed the door shut and locked it, it praying lock it that up. whoever it was had already left. I then you, walked around the right, floor, bro. checking the room. I'm walking around squaring up with everything. Noting. Then I went upstairs, which yeah, you for some be reason made me more scared. You gotta be, you gotta walk around like hands up or something, bro. Each room before I got knife in your hand, room. hands up. So you gotta do I something, bro. I ain't room, under the bed, everywhere, no signs of anyone. I stepped back into the hall, closing the door. I just thought to myself how creepy this something? was and tried to think of the best way to I think my the police is to not ready. phone. But then I heard something. You got catfished Quiet, by a whole dude. Soft bro. breathing, echoing inside the closet behind me. I froze. The longer I stood there, the more horrified I was. 
Bro, I'm not I standing there, the bro. stairs and went out the front door. There was a gas station at the end of the block, so I ran all the way there and got them to call the police. By the time everything was, was already settled, gone, by the nobody time got was there. in my home anymore. My phone that, was, that was expected. Missing, but that was the only thing that was gone. My account was backed up though, so it wasn't too hard to get a new phone and transfer all my apps and data. A few weeks later though, wow. I went back on Tinder, and that's when I started putting pieces together. The girl that ghosted me and creepily answered my phone call no longer existed. I thought that it would actually be possible for them to have gone to the restaurant, but instead of meeting me, followed me home. As for why they took my phone, I'm not sure. That, the only reason they I probably could were like crazy, so thought you were talking to other girls and stuff like that. Or show them their account. There's still a lot that doesn't make sense though, like why they only took my phone, and what they were doing in my house while I was sleeping. It wasn't all that, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't all that creepy, right? Just a dude, like, snuck into bro house and got into a closet and just was, like, staring at him, I guess. Like, it wasn't all too scary, but, you know. We got two more. I'm a 26-year-old female, and at the time, I was 23 and in college. I used Tinder throughout the second half of my college years. I wasn't exactly looking for a long-term relationship, but I also wasn't entirely avoiding it either. What? If things seemed more then serious, why would you use Tinder? Try. Otherwise, we just have some fun and move on. Oh, she was just trying to look for a After quick link. After school on That's Friday, it. I went back to my dorm and sat in bed, swiping left and right on the God. Internet. I no. was hoping to have something to do Locked. over the weekend. Gotta focus on, gotta focus on other things. After some time, one of the guys responded. We Jay talked Han. it out for an hour or so. Then he asked me out on a date for Sunday night. Okay. I agreed. Though it was rather not to get her a quick little email. link. That's all she's looking for, for real, for real. We texted for a while longer, mostly Wait. about school and hobbies. He said he went to the same school as me, but mm -hmm. was in the dorm building on the opposite side of the campus. Anyway, on Saturday we texted back and forth a few more times. Okay. On Sunday, I met him at a popular restaurant not far from the campus. Over dinner, he didn't strike me as anything but a normal person so normal that he was almost a little boring see i'm not trusting so nobody with like red eyes though, though and thought he was maybe holding back on a lot due to just meeting me once we finished we went outside and set another date for the next week okay as i said goodbye and started walking away he asked me if i needed a ride home nah living in the dorms at the campus i didn't have a car so i just walked everywhere including the restaurant i was surprised he even had a car since he lived at the school as well but i was even more surprised that he offered me a ride it seemed like he was trying to make his move for tonight which i wasn't expecting but seeing as i enjoyed my time with him and he was just like any other guy i took him up on the offer you sold yourself the campus was a 25 minute walk away so if nothing else at least i'd be back sooner he showed me over to his car, which was just an older black Honda yeah, SUV. Throw you into the back of that mug. I got into the passenger seat, and he started That's the passenger driving. seat? The back seat? As soon as we were on the road, things started to get awkward. I tried making small talk, but he wasn't really responding. Bro was, bro was so kidnapping you. You are not going back to that off. campus. After a few minutes, he took a left turn. Yeah, you ain't going back to the, the campus. Right, in the complete it's over with. Direction. It's done. I felt the my throat and my body got stiff. That mm -hmm. feeling of something awful about to happen had fallen over me. Hey, I think you missed the turn. I said nicely, trying to hide any hint of fear in my voice. No, he muttered. Mm. I was looking over at him, okay. but his gaze was locked on the road. Okay. Where are you taking me? He didn't respond. I didn't know what else to ask. Hey, we, hey, at this point, bruh, we're both going down. You ain't finna take me away. You feel me? I'm grabbing that steering wheel and I'm yanking it. We're going into a ditch or something. We're both going out. I'm not going to wherever you're trying to take me, bro. Me personally, I'm not doing it. Let me out of the car in one last effort to get out of the situation without anything escalating. He still didn't respond. The further out he drove, the more remote the area became. 
My head was aching from the fear of getting too far out to be able to find any way out of this. I still had my phone in my pocket, which I knew he was going to take as soon as we stopped wherever he was taking me. My plan, and really my only plan, was to try to take out my phone as quickly as possible and dial 911 before he would have time to react. I waited until he started making a turn, and right when he looked the other way, I pulled my phone out and with shaky hands dialed 911. There you go. He noticed immediately, trying to grab my phone mid turn and Are you trying to car. kill us? Yeah, you trying to kill us both. To keep myself away from grasp while the phone rang. And as soon as I heard a voice on the other side, I yelled for help, saying help. street names and direction we were going. The man was okay, still good, fighting good, good, good. me for my phone, hitting me and pulling me toward him. In the midst of the fight, he, about he lost control of the car and ran off the road straight into a speed limit sign. Bang. Out the car I go. I was I'm taking these heels off and I'm blurry, dusting. Probably from a concussion. But I could hear the operator on the phone talking from somewhere under my seat. I almost forgot the situation I was in, but once it came back to me, I immediately looked over. The windshield was shattered and the airbags were out, but the man I was with was gone. I tried to see out the windows, but he was nowhere. I didn't even remember seeing the windshield shatter or the airbags go off. So I might have even been unconscious for a few seconds or minutes without knowing it. I searched for my phone, telling the operator what happened and that I was okay. Officers came soon after. I had no lasting injuries, just some pains around my body. Mm. But what hurts the most is that I was so sure they would catch the man, having his name, description, and license plate. But I was wrong. The car was stolen the day before, which mm. was probably why he abandoned it after the crash. His name was likely fake, although it wasn't mean really Jay Han, name anyway, you know? and his Tinder account was removed. So, all they have is a description of what he looked like. I should have been more careful, and I definitely have been ever since. What he planned on doing with me is something too awful for me to even think about. I just really hope that he's not out there trying to do the same thing to someone else. Creepy ass smile, my boy. My like, god, damn. Can't hide your excitement, huh? Can't do nothing exciting around you. I don't want to see that smile no more. You feel me? I met a man who I'll name as John on Tinder. Damn. He was kind and well spoken, and we had gone on four or five dates before he invited me over to his home. I'd known him for almost a month and was ready for this next step to start dating outside of the public scene. I drove over to his house at 6.30 where he said he would have a nice homemade dinner ready for us. Okay. Driving you boy know how to cook, okay. Two cars in the driveway. Now you gotta pull out. I never asked they, if he had you know what I'm anything, so I thought maybe that's what this was. I didn't see it as a bad thing, but just something that he should have told me before coming over. Mm -mm. I drove back around and parked on the curb in front of his house. I walked up to the door and rang the doorbell. First things first. You don't even know the guy. You y'all never met IRL out in public first, and so on your first time meeting him, you decided to go to his house, not knowing what he could do. You feel me? Like she's using her, using her brain. That's all it is. John opened the door quickly with a big smile and invited me in. By now, I'd already decided in my mind that this probably isn't the right guy for me, but I didn't want to be disrespectful and fully commit to ending things after just seeing his house for the first time. The kitchen was less messy, seeming like it had been cleaned up recently. Oh yeah, I ain't doing this. On I am not doing this. Food, but after seeing the place, I didn't have an appetite anymore. I kindly told him that my stomach wasn't feeling well today, and that I'd try to eat it later. His reaction, though, was off-putting. Yeah, yeah, put some drugs up in that mug. As if he, he put something in the answer, and was in deep thought about what to say. I couldn't look him in the eyes for more than a few seconds before it just got weird. When I looked away, I think he snapped out of it. Oh, okay, it's cool. Then he took my plate and put it in the fridge. 
I started up a conversation, asking how his day was and if anything new was going on with him. He answered normally, but it seemed like something else was on his mind. He was looking around, trying to be sneaky about it, and seemed almost nervous. This is not his house. Him looking around reminded me about the cars in the driveway. Hey, I saw you had a bunch of cars in the driveway. Do you have roommates? I asked politely. Uh, yeah. They're away for the weekend, though. He said. Oh, yeah, it's over now. Nah. Then he got up and excused himself, saying he had to take a call, and walked back toward the living room. No, he's taking that call. I'm getting that car driving home. I'm not doing this. Nothing like I'm sorry. Before. I didn't like it at all. I heard him softly talking on the phone for 30 seconds. Then he came back and set his phone down on the table. Sorry, he said, sitting down. I smiled, but it was getting hard to fake it. I didn't really feel safe or comfortable in his house, so I knew I needed to leave. He was looking around again, and I was just trying to get the courage to tell him that I was going to go, until a thump came from upstairs. Right when it sounded, John looked directly at me, as if checking whether or not I heard it. Give me a second. Yeah, you better go ahead and take all the time stairs. you need. I'm gonna get out of here, though. Just a moment later, I'm fuck with his you. phone that was still sitting on the table lit up. Nor gotta go, I gotta go. I'm not that, doing this. I felt justified given this whole ordeal. I stood up and leaned over, seeing it was a text from a number that wasn't saved as a name. The text was short, reading, Do you have her yet? Are you what? in a panic for a second. Trying to wrap my head around the text. Oh, it's all right. Footsteps coming back down the stairs. I heard. I would have heard the thump. Bro would have left, and I would have been gone. As footsteps were quickly coming behind me from inside the house, I got in my car and floored it out of the neighborhood. Yeah, you gotta go. I took some time to calm down. Did somebody hop in the back seat? My driveway. Somebody's in the back seat. Police. Somebody's in the back seat. I didn't know if there was something going on or not. But I don't feel like oh. I was in the wrong for believing there was. Why would he lie about nobody being home? And what was that text supposed to mean? It all added up in my mind. But the police questioned John, along with his roommate that was upstairs. They even allowed the officers to do a quick search of the home. But they found nothing pointing to any bad intentions. The officers sympathized saying they understood my concerns and that they would have felt the same, but there just wasn't anything else they could do. So now I'm left to just hope that I took it all the wrong way and there was nothing else going on. Nah, I don't, don't feel just though, don't feel like that. Told, and a strange <clears throat> message that meant nothing. Don't even feel like that. Yeah, it's very understandable. That bro looking around... Like, he's looking for something. He ain't looking around the house for no reason. Maybe he's just nervous about the house, how the house looks. If he was, he would have cleaned up before he got there, but, you know? Get out of here, bro. Well, uh, you know? T Tinder, I I don't think I'll be using Tinder anytime soon. Uh, you feel me? I, I don't think I could use a dating app in general, but, you know, everybody got to try to find love somehow. I'm gonna just find it another way, I guess. That's all for today's video. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure that like, subscribe, and down below. Till next time.